Today we aim to work out the Game of Thrones ending and who, once and for all, sits on the Iron Throne. Please note, spoilers from the show will be discussed, so if you haven't seen it, you have been warned. So this is the second part of the two-part miniseries on the channel for hit HBO show Game of Thrones. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, share the video and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you haven't watched part one, I will link it in the description below for you. I'd highly recommend checking it out before continuing on with this part. So previously we discussed the possible outcomes and futures of the White Walkers, the Lannisters, the Greyjoys and touched upon the possibility of Brienne's role in the final season of Game of Thrones. In this video we'll be looking at other key characters and houses and at the end I will give my view on who I think will end up on the Iron Throne once and for all. So let's look at probably the two biggest houses left to discuss, Houses Stark and Targaryen. Of the Starks there are currently four siblings left with Jon Snow, Arya, Sansa and Bran. The Starks have had a hard run throughout the story, losing key family members in the most horrid way and being split apart through circumstance. However, the Stark children have reunited and now stand again as one of the most powerful houses in all of Westeros. To begin with Arya. We've seen her go from a tomboy to one of the most threatening assassins in the land. She's grown significantly since the show's start, developing both skills as a fighter and assassin, as well as mental strength few can match. While I have few doubts she's got a role to play in the final season of the show, it's hard to fully know what that role might be. She seems to have put her family first, putting aside possible issues with Sansa, and is showing maturity in her support. The question is, what about Aya's character and personality? The girl that was there at the show's start seems to almost be lost as she's seen significant trauma and then spent time with the faceless men, almost seeing death by the hand of the waif. What are you doing? We were only playing. The game of faces. The girl is not ready. Clearly not. Knowing the show, I might also be wrong to say almost. Perhaps all isn't as we see it right now. We know full well things rarely are so simple when discussing the faceless men. Arya's motivation is unclear at best, saying she wants to reclaim her identity yet at the same time seemingly changing her role and purpose at a critical stage of the show's story. I have no doubts that Arya is not going to sit on the Iron Throne, but suspect we'll see her either end up as one of the biggest sacrifices or possibly one of the biggest curveballs in the story. There's another aspect about Arya that needs consideration, which is Gendry, the son of former King Robert Baratheon and so one who could arguably claim the throne. I don't think this will happen, but given his history with Arya, if the girl from season 1 is still there to be found, he could be the one to bring her back. I should be calling you Milady. Do not call me Milady. As Milady commands. Well, that was unladylike. <laughs> Moving on with the Stark kids, next let's look at Bran's role. Having acquired the abilities of the Three-Eyed Raven and having visions of events occurring around Westeros and both the past and future, he is set to play a pivotal role in this season. This, in addition to his encounter with the Night King and his vision, is likely to be a moment which could be significant in how the battle with the White Walkers plays out. I think it's safe to say that Bran won't end the show as the King of the Iron Throne, but will likely play a pivotal role in how the story with the Night King plays out and may be forced to make a massive sacrifice with his abilities to support those he cares for. His visions and role are shrouded in mystery, but what is known is Bran has been spending almost the whole time in the show learning and trying to help those he loves. I don't think this motive is likely to change and could be pivotal in the conclusion of the upcoming war. Also, I don't think I can move on without mentioning Hodor, whose death was emotionally crippling and still makes my eyes well up even thinking about it now. A truly phenomenal, even if gut-wrenching moment in the show. Hold the door! Hold the door! Hold the door! Hold the door! Right, so that leaves Sansa and Jon. To begin, Sansa's role is pivotal, as she's grown into a leader of sorts as the show has proceeded and looks like a potential queen. She's still hasty and at times naive in her decision making, but her growth is significant. 
While she has been supporting her family and Daenerys in the battles thus far, I do have questions as to whether she will remain this way, as she's shown in moments to waver and desire power. I think her honour and teachings from her parents will prevent her from turning, but her role is to be a leader and more importantly, her circumstances could well mean her future is one to bring forward a new age in the show once the wars have ended. I also think we'll see Brienne offering her hand to her and John in the coming season. Which leads me nicely to John, and now known to be a Targaryen from birth. His role in the final season will be pivotal, both in his relationship with Daenerys and as a leader in the battle with the threat from the north. This leaves John in an unfortunate position, which is as leader and even heir to the throne, he's one who has put his body on the line to try and fight battles, to the point where he's died and was brought back to life to continue his journey. He's the white knight of the show, one whose honour is never in question, a man who in battle will not shy away from protecting those he loves, and whose commitment is never in question, despite all the unfair hardships he's had to face in his life. He's an ideal, but this is also why I don't think he'll end on the Iron Throne. He doesn't seek power, but he seeks for the greater good. This can lead to decisions of self-sacrifice in which he doesn't get a second chance. And that's exactly what I think his fate has in store for him. He's got a war to fight and people to protect, and I think he will make the biggest sacrifice of all to protect them. Now it's probably worth mentioning a couple of characters with key links to John. First Melisandre, who has both wronged John and brought him back to life after his death. Her role was thought to be coming to an end after being exiled, but she returns with Daenerys and has cryptically said her end will come in Westeros. What this means is not yet known, but it's likely she has one significant act before her conclusion and likely death finally comes in the final season. And then there's Sam Tarly, Jon's closest friend and ally, and now becoming one of the greatest resources in all of Westeros. He's spent a lot of time learning and growing. He's not a great warrior, but his knowledge is likely to be fundamental in the show's conclusion. His interaction with Bran has already suggested they will be working closely together, and while I think Bran will likely make sacrifices, I can't see Sam doing the same in the end. Let's not forget, he has to survive, as he has Gilly and her baby to return to, which will surely remain a primary motivation for him. Finally, that leaves us Daenerys and Tyrion, two of the most popular and significant characters left in the show. Daenerys has always had the motivation to return to Westeros and take the throne for House Targaryen. Now she's returned with incredible strength in her subjects and dragons, and has allied with what remains one of the most powerful figures in Westeros, Jon Snow, with the two found out to be lovers and aunt and nephew. Her role in the final season will be one to fight the coming wars. Had her war only been with Cersei for the Iron Throne, there's probably little doubt that Daenerys would end the show on the Iron Throne herself. Do you understand? I'm no ordinary woman. My dreams come true. However, with the threat of the White Walkers and having already claimed one of her dragons as their own, she's forced into a position where her crowning is no longer assured. Her relationship to Jon Snow is also complex, but one we're likely to see great commitment from both to each other. With these factors in mind, I think Daenerys is set to meet a fate similar to Jon's, one where she's forced to make sacrifices. She's less gung-ho than Jon, more methodical and more risk-averse, but at the same time, the stakes are high and so, as we saw when she saved Jon once from the White Walkers already in Season 7, she may be forced to give up her original vision for those she loves or for the great good. And finally that leaves Tyrion, her greatest advisor, or the Hand, and the man who against all odds could end a show in power. Tyrion has grown throughout the course of the show, he's shown an ability to survive against all odds, and as a politician and strategist there are very few as capable as him. Even if not physically capable of being a threat, he's one of the smartest characters in the show, and has the ability to form relationships which few can do. This is evident, as he's from House Lannister, yet working with the Starks and the Targaryens, of which both houses have absolutely every reason to kill him on sight, given the history. 
I think Tyrion at this point of the show will support the efforts of Jon and Daenerys, despite the conclusion in Season 7, where he found out about their relationship and had an unreadable look on his face. But why would people accept Tyrion? Well, as there are losses in the show, we'll surely see the potential candidates reduced. But more importantly, Tyrion is able to control situations, his life and his circumstances in a way few are. I also think the show's alluded to bigger things ahead in Tyrion's future in Season 6, where he showed a bond with one of Daenerys' dragons that no other character in the show has shown. Vitally, I think we're going to see Tyrion perform actions which will endear him to people and he will be recognised as a leader, despite all against him. There's our brave men knocking at our door! Let's go kill them! We've seen him grow from a self-serving, almost petulant child to becoming one of the strongest authorities within the whole of the Game of Thrones universe through his ability to understand how he is of value to others and take control of situations to work for him to lead the life he intends to. Just as he's done throughout the previous seasons, I think we'll see Tyrion end the show by overcoming all of the odds to become arguably the most important figure in all of Westeros. And who will be at his side? Well. Look back at the early seasons of the show and only one of the Lannister family showed signs of any respect and compassion during this time. While she hated the Lannisters, Tyrion remained faithful to her and it's unlikely she will forget his actions. Never mind that since then he's gone on to perform acts against his own family that show he has no commitment to them. And so I suspect that in the final season of this incredible show, we could see a shock end with ultimately Tyrion Lannister in power, with Sansa Stark at his side, starting a new dawn in all of Westeros. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the two part mini series, and if you did, please drop a like, share, and subscribe for more like this. Now, I'll finally end with the question who do you think ends the show on the Iron Throne? Let me know in the comment section below.